Well, hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live from our news up here at Tadisawe Kanda. Also live on 2 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okonsi. Tonight, ahead of the new patriotic party's upcoming presidential delegates conference, some flag bearer aspirants, that's the special delegates congress, some flag bearer aspirants say they doubt President Kufuado's statement that he does not support any candidate. Tonight, we we'll hear from one of them, Governor J. Japan, and, and, and why all of this is happening. Also, the parliament goes on recess tonight. We bring you a wrap of what the House has been up to during this session and the last day. Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, Dr. Rashid Duman, and our parliamentary correspondent, Kamla Kluche, will be joining us. Stay with us on, on Ghana tonight. And then also what happened with the cathedral. There's a committee that has been set up for that investigation. Stay with us. Also, the banking consultants have been reacting to the news that the Bank of Ghana is considering recapitalization move after it posted over 60 billion cities loss in 2022. Question is, government has to now recapitalize the Bank of Ghana. Government is broke. As, as according to the finance minister, we are, we are in a crisis situation. Government doesn't have money. Then, then what happens? The Bank of Ghana is also saying that they are not to blame for the loss of 60 billion. So who has to be held responsible for this? That's the question that we are asking tonight. As always, we are very, very interactive. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Brief. The West African sub region faces a potential crisis. Military chiefs from ECOWAS member states have been meeting over whether or not to make a military intervention in cool trouble Niger. There are unfortunately emerging trends of some military takeovers in the West African region, which are, however, not seen or accepted by the international community as the norm and will never be. The governing new patriotic party has scaled another hurdle ahead of its August 26 special delegate conference. The latest challenge was with its voters register of which another meeting has been held with the aspirants to address grievances. We needed to also uh, uh, understand some of the processes needed. Again, we have detected some key anomalies in the album, and we needed to point it out to the party as well. The guidelines or the modalities for the elections and on the day of voting, two is the validation of the register which is a normal thing that we do in an election hearing process. Action speaks louder than words. The optics have created a different impression. What's the impression? What the president could have done was either ask the chief of staff to rein them in, because that is what is creating that impression. Speaker Albang Magbeng has directed the finance minister, Ken Ofriata, to appear before Parliament's Finance Committee to brief members on the debt restructuring program. The directive follows a motion by Minority Leader Keso Latoforsen asking Parliament to demand a thorough explanation on the policy. The details of the debt restructuring program is what we are requesting of the Minister responsible for finance to actually present to us and not just an update. An update may be that he has successfully restructured A, B or C. We want him to give us a brief. It's because we only have to read in some of the IMF debt sustainability documents for us to understand that we are going to achieve debt sustainability in the year 2028. LPG Marketers Association is warning of a possible negative impact on LPG consumption if the National Petroleum Authority's plant recirculation module 
is not implemented comprehensively. According to the NPA, phase one of the reviewed module is expected to take off in September this year. But speaking to three business, Vice President of the LPG Marketers Association, Gabriel Kumi, said the four bottling stations set to commence operations cannot serve even 30% of the market. We are uh, hopeful that they will, they will make that switch in a very, very, very gradual and systematic manner so we don't disorient the consumer. So we don't lose the, 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 the LPG market, the consumption that we have already built. City authorities in Kumasi have backed down from being confrontational in its intention to raid the central business district of commercial tricycle operation. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly and leadership of the tricycle operators have been meeting to amicably resolve the issue. Some time ago, you did similar to uh, the short shop people. Do similar to us. If we are 3,000 in the central business, okay, let us know, okay, 3,000, you are mean. We are giving sticker to 1,000 people. We will understand. <laughs> Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Coming up next, here on Ghana Tonight, banking consultants have been reacting to the new the development that the Bank of Ghana is considering, uh, in fact, has to be recapitalized after it posted some 60 billion CDs lost in 2022. This is an issue that we have been taking a number of you know, angles since the beginning of, of the week and how things are playing out. Be and this development is as a result of, according to the Bank of Ghana, uh, taking a haircut of some 50 billion cities. We're going to get into the details of that. They held an emergency press conference yesterday. A number of things came up. But today, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumanakins for Bagwin, has directed the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, to appear before the Finance Committee of Parliament. Now, that's the, the development with this because of the domestic debt exchange program, which has led to the Bank of Ghana posting that loss of over 60 billion cities as at the end of 2022. This is what happened in Parliament. Take a look. Debt sustainability, you will need to go through debt restructuring. The contours, the details of the debt restructuring program is what we are requesting of the minister responsible for finance to actually present to us and not just an update. An update may be that he has successfully restructured A, B, or C. But that is not what we are looking for. We want him to give us a brief. It's because we only have to read in some of the IMF debt sustainability documents for us to understand that we are going to achieve debt sustainability in the year 2028. It's because some of us here are not aware of that information. So when we are debating on those issues, they are handicapped. It is only right that this House get to understand that our debt as we speak is unsustainable and we are taking step A, B, C and D to achieve sustainability. And in the period, you have to do A, B, C and D along the way. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, it is not about update, but he has to present the program, the policy of debt restructuring to us for consideration. Mr. Speaker, that is all what I'm asking for. The government debt restructuring program for consideration by the House. I will proceed to direct that this presentation be made by the minister before the, the Committee on Finance. And then the Committee on Finance will then report a comprehensive representation to the House for consideration. Chairman, ranking member of the Committee or finance should take up this matter, get the minister to appear before the committee to present the 
government's debt restructuring program. The committee, together with the ministry, will deliberate over it, and then the committee will now submit what they have in the form of a report to the House for consideration and other adoption or rejection by the House. I so direct. So that's the development now, and, and what we do know, the speaker um, took interest in this matter because this is the Bank of Ghana we are talking about. And, and the seriousness of the situation, according to some banking consultants, is being watered down by the Bank of Ghana's responses to what we are faced with right now. And, and that's why the likes of um, John Jinnapur as well in Parliament earlier today contributing to this raise fundamental questions about the impact of what has happened to the Bank of Ghana. Take a look. He wanted to grow 2.8. He says he will end at 1.5. Non-oil GDP, he, he wanted 3%. He says he will end at 1.5. Inflation, his target was 18. He will end at 31%. Primary balance, he wanted a positive primary balance of 0.5. He will end with a negative primary balance of 0.7. Gross reserves, <laughs> and I wish the deputy minister was here. Madam, we are talking of gross reserves, we are not talking of net reserves. <laughs> and in your document, you stated gross reserves. This oil, if you take President Akufo in 2022, they made a loss of 60 billion cities mm. from a profit of almost one billion with this minimal amount of oil revenue. We made a profit of over one billion. And yet with all these resources, under President Akufuado, the Bank of Ghana has made a loss of 60 billion. Oh. Bank, now yeah. the Bank of Ghana is not a profit-making entity. The Bank of Ghana is a regulator and a banker of a large resort, a banker of the government, and then, most importantly, even when they make profit, they have to transfer it to the consolidated fund. But as we can look at equity, and that, that for me is the most important part. Under President Mahama, we had a positive equity of four billion. The equity is what like shareholders contribute. So when there's profit, you transfer to the shareholder in the form of transfer, which is equity. But as we got today, today, the equity of the Bank of Ghana is negative fifty-five billion. Wow. Look, we've never witnessed this. Wow. And I think that this chamber, I'm putting politics aside on this call, this chamber should take an interest in investigating how come the central bank makes a loss of 55 billion in terms of equity. How are you going to pay this? Ghana can deal with this. It's to print money. And when you print money, it's called synergy. It doesn't come with any backing because it doesn't come with value. It's just paper money you are dumping in the system. And when you dump so much paper money, it means that a lot of money is following or chasing fewer goods, which spikes inflation. It's therefore no surprise that Ghana's inflation hovered around 45%. It's a complete mismanagement of the economy. So, you see, this is just to, to let you understand and appreciate how things are played out and then this specific impact of the situation at the Bank of Ghana. Okay, and the Bank of Ghana itself, being the regulator of the banking sector, has actually directed banks that were hit by the domestic debt exchange program, as they have been hit, to submit recapitalization plans by the end of next month. Now, the Bank of Ghana pay the auditors, their own auditors, the Deloitte, who audited the Bank of Ghana's books. That led to we knowing this 60 billion CDs loss, as in 2022, have recommended that the Bank of Ghana needs some injection, you can say recapitalization, as they're asking the commercial banks to do. Now, this is what the Bank of Ghana said. Take a look. Um, based on their own expression of what, what has led to this point, that they suffered a 50% haircut, principal haircut, which amounted to $64.5 billion because they had also invested in marketable government stocks, non-marketable instruments, and the exposure to cocoa board. So because of all of this, that's what has happened. Now, so this is Dr. Philip Abredu Otu, 
who is the director of research at the Bank of Ghana, who has been consistently saying that they are not to blame. Bank of Ghana is not to blame for, for what's happened. Okay. Dr. Rich Monetian is going to be joining us shortly. We'll, we'll find out if Bank of Ghana is saying they are not to blame. So who is to be held responsible for this situation? Because if we don't hold anybody responsible, the probability of this happening again is very high. We know this country. But this is the head of research of Bank of Ghana. What has happened is that we've taken a one-time hit for almost everything, and we don't expect anything else to, uh, to impact our balance sheet. The marketable instruments, the non-marketable instruments, and then Cocoa Board. These, these three items accounted for uh, 53, about 53.1 billion of the losses that we made. Uh, out of that 60 loss, these three items alone is 53. It's about 90% of the loss is coming from domestic debt exchange. Uh, will we have a domestic debt exchange impacting on our balance sheet next year? Emphatic no. It's not happening again. So that's the Bank of Ghana. 90% of this loss, of the 60 billion, is coming from the domestic debt exchange program. So Dr. Rich Monetian is a banking consultant. Thank you so much for joining us the China here on Ghana tonight. The Bank of Ghana is consistently maintained that we shouldn't blame them for this 60 billion, right? That they posted at, at the end of 2022. They say because of DDEP. So who is to blame? Who is to be held responsible for this? Thank you very much. I think if it's in law, it's joint, joint liability. Two of them, the Minister of Finance and the, 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 the Governor. Because one instructed the other and the one worked on it. So somebody must take responsibility. I see. And so you're thinking that it's the Bank of Ghana and the, 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 the finance minister. Those, those two, Dr. Joanne, should take responsibility for this. What's happened to, to, to the central bank? The responsibility who they have caused this mess into the country. And let me, before I even go there, let me take your back, your mind back a little. I think when the, the, the minister appeared earlier to tell them about the DDEP, sorry to say, nobody in that house was able to tell us the cost of the project that we are going to enter. That is the first mistake that we've, the Ghanaian, the parliament and everybody has done. Because it looks like nobody was interested in the, the data and science. What I mean by the figures that was going to come out. And if they have really questioned it, and the man has presented these figures to them today, they could have said that, yes, we stand by you, or we didn't agree with you. Unfortunately, when he made this presentation to the parliament, nobody, nobody questioned it. And that is where I have my biggest worry, that when we go there, is a question of we, is it, are we talking about issues? Very, very important. If we take the partisan from it, and we'll be very, very objective and constructive and critique about what we do, times we won't find ourselves where we find ourselves. So for me, the, it's a joint liability joint and several liability if you like the lawyers they tell you the people who have done it are responsible and if there are any sanctions they are to suffer the sanctions i see and it's, so it is the bank of ghana governor and ken of Riata, you say should take the sanction but in this case now we're getting to know that government has to recapitalize the central bank the lender of last resort Government is also broke, doesn't have money. So why is this money that the Bank of Ghana needs over this period going to come from? Thank you very much. I'm very, very grateful and thankful for asking me this question. That is why I asked you earlier. Had we acted earlier and asked him when he was going to do it, we could have answered this question. We kept quiet. 
He has now moments make it, they say policy insolvent, whatever they call it, negative equity. Where are we going to get? We are hardly pressed, hardly pressed on the fiscal side of the equation. So where are we going to get that name? If bank of if government decided even to finance it, then it means the debt exchange that mm -hmm. we have done, we are going to increase our debt, not to a sustainable level where the IMF has agreed that we should get to about 60% in 2027. But if you look at the, the way things are playing out and, and the picture that you paint, let me find out this. If government has to now bail out or come to the aid of the central bank, is it not going to affect the, the policy credibility of the bank as a lender of last resort in this instance? It's, it's rather supposed to even be helping government in times of distress. Well, when, when you listen to the director of research, I've forgotten his name, That's the, he's saying Dr. that Dr. Ode, the yes. policy solvent. But if you allow ourselves to be bailed out, by bailout, like the financial stability trying to bail out the indigenous bank, you are equally as bad as anybody. So I don't see where the policy credibility he was talking about. Because if government has to inject close to 55 billion, 55 billion, if you convert it by even a dollar of 12, we are talking close to about four point something billion US dollars, which is more far more exceedingly above than the IMF loans that we, mm -hmm. we have just sign on so i don't know where they're going to get the money to recapitalize it but the good thing is that i think the recapitalization will be structured from this year up to 2027 and even that even that this may affect the sustainability 60 percent gdp debt ratio sustainability I, I see it's a very very important reference point that you make uh, because for instance, and, and I'm going to put that on the screen shortly, because the Bank of Ghana itself, uh, Dr. Chayane, is asking the commercial banks who were impacted by the domestic debt exchange program to submit their recapitalization plans. Now the Bank of Ghana itself needs some, some help or recapitalization. And the only, the only support right now we know for the commercial banks that were impacted by the DDEP is this $1 billion dollars financial stability fund that is about 15 billion cds that's the table you see there the source of this money as far as we do know now is some 250 million from from the world bank a hundred million dollars from the africa development bank the rest of the 750 million dollars of the of of the one billion or you say 15 billion cds we don't we don't know as yet and this fund it's not just for the commercial banks. And even the World Bank support for this financial stability fund, 200 million is coming in this month, uh, sorry, this year. And then in 2024, the 50 million would, would come. So it's not like it's even coming in lump sum for the banks impacted by the DDEP to rely on. How dire is this, Dr. Chiaini? The financial stability is even supposed to support the entire sector, not including the uh, the MFIs and the the security uh, security uh, companies like the SEC companies who have bought the bonds and the data banks and have you. So that is even what is supposed to do to support them. The Bank of Ghana one is not even part of it. So if you look at the aggregate, we have already spent forty one point. The DDEP on the banking sector totally is 41.3 billion. So if you ask this 48 point something billion, we are talking about close to 92 billion money that has been thrown into the gutters. Uh, but, but that's serious to, to say the least, is it not? Uh, did you any? Yeah, it is. You see, that is why, my brother, I have always asked this question. When it started in November, I think I was one of the first person to do some models to tell Ghanaians the cost of it. Nobody, as I speak to you even now, nobody is able to ask the finance minister what 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 would be the cost of this DDEP or DDE something. Nobody. So it, it has come to us as a shock. But it shouldn't be a shock. 
It shouldn't be a shock because if the real test, stress testing that they said they have done and they have made it known and make a presentation even to parliament, people would have seen that we were heading into ditch. But anytime we go, it's all about English. You know, I think I've told people that if you take England, UK, especially if you take England out of the UK, Ghanaians are the best spoken people in English. We can use English to semantics to draw lines and say so many things, even when what you're saying is wrong, they will use the English to make their case right. I always say this because people come and make good presentation, but their ability to question the data, as my friend said, is data and science, and they do not lie. This afternoon, this morning, I think morning, the governor of Bank of England had to raise the rate, the policy rate to 0.25% to 5.2. Look at the question that is being asked. He's called to parliament to explain the implication, the, the ramification on the economy, on mortgages, on finance, on peoples. But here, here, nothing of that sort is being done. Until we get to a point where people can be more inquiring with science and data and knowing the implication, cost implication, we would always continue to have this argument. Hmm. Uh, and it's interesting you I talk about big, big the, the, the English language we use to explain away all the problems and the impact of it. But this has been an issue in Parliament, at least since we started having this conversation from Monday. We've been calling on Parliament to also seek answers to the questions that the likes of you and many people we've been talking to on this show have been asking about this situation with the, with the Bank of Ghana. Today, this was an issue, Dr. Chayane, in Parliament as well. So we can trust Parliament at least to, to get these answers for us now that the Finance Minister has been summoned to appear before the Finance Committee? You know, you can do a post-mortem, not <laughs> pro proactiveness. You know, I always believe in proactiveness, not retroactive. Proactive in the sense that when the game starts, you begin to ask the person, what will be the cost of this program to the sector, the banking sector, the Bank of Ghana? It is not when you have entered into the, the game, the field of play, where you have even taken some money from the IMF, you're going to question what has already been done. That is why I urge them, I urge the parliamentarians that a time has come for them to, to be, be more <coughs> forthright and be more quantitative people and more, more quest, people who question figures. Because if you don't question figures, in Ghana with English, my brother, they will get away with it. Unfortunately, Dr. Rich Monichahini, appreciate your time on Ghana tonight. And, and this is an issue that also gained some currency in Parliament. Dr. Rich Monichahini is a banking consultant, written quite extensively about the impact of this domestic debt exchange program. You can find more of the publications on 3news.com as well. But coming up next on Ghana tonight, Parliament has gone on resets uh, to this evening, and we bring you a wrap of what the House has been up to during this last uh, day and the session of Parliament as a whole. And uh, what we do know as well at cities by close of day today from Parliament is that a committee indeed uh, has been set up to probe the National Cathedral after Samuel Okuja to Blackwa pushed this particular issue in Parliament. So we'll have more of that and the developments in Parliament right after this quick break. Stay with us. This is Ghana Tonight. We'll be back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint, and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo Superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the 
obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. What does winning mean to you? For Yao, it's seeing the joy in his mother's eyes after he provided her with a state-of-the-art kitchen to cook her signature Unapo Jolof. It's a mega win. For Ajua, it's turning her passion for photography into a successful career while providing her children with the best education possible. It's a mega win. For Kwame, it's becoming his own boss and starting his music business. It's a mega win. Whatever winning means to you, Mega 6 Lotto can help you achieve it in grand style. With only 49 numbers to choose from, the odds are always in your favor. Play with as little as two Ghana CDs for a chance to win millions of CDs every week. Download our Android and iOS apps. Dial star 266 hash or visit mega6loto.com to make a mega impact on your life and the lives of others. Mega 6 Lotto. Mega winnings, mega impact. The Mega 6 Lotto is regulated and monitored by the NLA. Hey, Ojam, you're looking good, oh, my friend. Is there something you're not telling me? Yes, I'm feeling very good and strong. What is the secret? It is not a secret. My farmer used Yara Miller Activa on me two weeks after planting. This boosted my growth. Then after, he used Yara Bella Sulfan as top dressing when I was at knee length. My goodness and strength is because of Yara Miller Activa and Yara Bella Sulfan. Yara fertilizers have nitrite based fertilizers that are readily available for plant upkeep and do not over acidify the soil. Yara fertilizers also contain micronutrients such as zinc, boron and manganese which aid in yield and crop quality. If you want to look good like me, then your farmer must go for Yara fertilizers. They are available in accredited agri-input shops nationwide. For more information, call 0308-251-060 or visit our webpage at yara.com.gh or Facebook page. And there is more. Yara retailers can also benefit from selling Yara products by just downloading Yara Connect app and scanning QR codes on the Yara sack at the point of sale to end rewards. Use Yara fertilizers for better yield and quality produce. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Wana? That's me just to say my name quickly and pass on my email and then my Gina Sabema. Now many people for the the whole day in the Jarasa. You heard everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Hey, hey. what do you do with some cool two thousand dollars? Okay, okay, okay. Here to win game show is exactly what you need. Every week, two lucky people stand the chance of winning money. All you have to do is go through some quizzes and fun games. Somebody from Peru is called Peru. Eh? Whatever you say, you have to be proud because your family people are watching. Somebody from Madagascar is called Malagasy. Correct! Okay, okay, let's go, let's go. Uh -uh. It's you that will tell me, let's go. <laughs> You are not even winning. <laughs> okay. Hold and stand and jump to Bastion. Amazing. Five. Jump go. Jump go. Jump go. Are you Kwe Ama? Be proud. Okay. First of all, is are you Kwe supposed to be a man or a woman? Put it on your forehead. Are you Kwe? <laughs> be a part of this game show right here on TV3 and take on some. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Come join us on Here to Win Game Show, where you win it all. Hey, yo, mama! Hey, mama! Hey, yo, mama! Hey, mama! Hey, mama. Hey, mama. Here to win! Here to win, premiering on Saturday, 12 August at 8 p.m. on TV3. Right. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. And uh, today was the last day for this session of Parliament. And a uh, number of things, including the, the domestic debt action program, the finance minister being summoned by the speaker to appear before the finance committee, plus a number of things which will be of interest to you. And that's why our chief parliamentary correspondent, Kamala Kluche, um, is joining us on Zoom together with Dr. Rashid Rahman, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us um, on Ghana tonight. First of, first of all, start off with you, Kamala. Uh, how did the day end today, especially with, with that development with the National Cathedral? What happened in Parliament? Well, it's been quite a long day, but this has not been that packed as compared to um, the previous uh, ones where the seats very late into the night. They closed just about uh, an hour and a half ago. So, I mean, it tells you that they haven't really done so much, I mean, especially, you know, the last minute items that normally will come, the loan agreements here and there and all that. Uh, we had two of them today. One, one was shot down. The other passed. There was an attempt by the minority to shoot it down, but later on, uh, the the speaker uh, held the question. And when they went for suspension, he came back. He put a question, and then they had to agree to that to give two million dollars for their great expansion uh, loan. But. On the issue of the national category, like you did say, it's been on the other paper for a very long time, at least uh, more than similar, almost almost a year or so ago. And this is one of the motions that you know has been pushed so much by the nocturnal MP, someone who could a black. But finally today, the speaker allowed that there's a motion taken as a private member's motion that's uh, seeking an inquest into the construction of the national, national cathedral, which, for want of a better word, has become a scandal and the sort in the words of some of the for a black man. So the House agreed in the principle that, yes, the motion was agreed to by the entirety of the House. Now it came to the formation of the ad hoc committee that should have the inquest into the matter. The Speaker decided to okay, leave it to the members of both sides, the minority presented their list, but the majority did not. And it became a task of the back and forth here and there. This was when the first deputy speaker, the second deputy speaker was chairing. The, the speaker himself was in another meeting. But when the speaker resumed the seat, it appeared that the minority uh, was consistent with it, but the majority did not uh, uh, list or put together members on their side who would be on the committee that would work together with the minority to unravel the mystery behind the construction of the National Party. And this was what the speaker had to say, Sean Please, I've just seen the list <laughs> of the nominees from the minority caucus but there's nothing from the majority caucus. I think time is of essence. As we leave here, please kindly consult and get the other names so that we can compose the team. This matter was discussed at the lobby, the pre-sitting meeting, and it was the understanding agreement of both sides of the house that the motion would be moved. And so once it was moved and the decision was taken, the committee has to be constituted to do the work. That one, I'm very clear about it. So with this, we move on. 
stay. So, Kamala, Parliament is now set to conduct an independent inquiry into the National Cathedral project. That's what's going to happen. Absolutely. That's, that is, yes, that's, that's actually what's going to happen. And uh, I mean, I must say that there's the, the Nocturnal MP, some of the people of Lava is, is quite elated. In fact, last week he raised the matter and drew the attention of the House the fact that it's, it's been uh, too long a time it's been on the order paper and that the House must take a decision on them. But well, as it is now, the both leaders will have to meet. They have about three months of holidays. And as to how they're going to meet, well, no timeline. But what the speaker said was that in the vacation, even though they have a lot to do in their constituency and also some committee work, they should be able to meet up and have this um, committee set up. As for the terms and references, that, that was uh, uh, not spoken about. That one will put the committee together and they come back and they report to the speaker when they will soon. Then the way forward would be known as to how they would be able to uh, really unpack them. I see. And um, interesting developments there. Dr. Rashid Romana, I'm you at this point because during this session, which ended today, one of your concerns has been the minority boycotting parliament uh, whenever. James Etiquason, uh, Colin Zauder, or even Dr. Kesela Tufosi himself appears in court. That's a decision they took and block. Now, it doesn't appear that they're going to change their minds anytime soon, does it? At least by your own interactions with, with the leadership of parliament. Um, yes, Alfred, uh, thank you very much for having me. And first of all, before I uh, go um, to your question, let me I uh, congratulate you and your colleagues uh, on uh, your achievement uh, as uh, the most watched late night current affairs program. Congratulations uh, uh, from me and from my, my colleagues. Thank you. Um, indeed, you know, if um, perhaps maybe if you allow me, let me just uh, do a quick look at, I mean, uh, the highs and the lows of this uh, this this meeting of, uh, of of parliament, which has just ended today, um, you know, Alfred. If you look at uh, maybe let's start with the lows. I mean, the big one, of course, is uh, the issue of the boycott. Uh, not necessarily the boycott itself, but you know the fact that we still are not um, at a point where we are seeing. Uh, both sides of the house uh, trying at least on uh, maybe major issues uh, build to build consensus because if you ask them I'm sure they will say that oh we have been working together we have been building consensus on on most issues but I think there are critical moments in the history of every institution and critical issues sometimes where you know people expect to see, um, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, leadership shown uh, on the matter of the boycott. Uh, it looks as if, uh, you know, the issue of consensus uh, and leadership has eluded uh, our parliament because I have not seen, uh, despite what we have heard in the media, sometimes from both sides, uh, that we are willing to talk, we are willing to sit down and discuss. Uh, it looks like both sides have really dug in uh, and there hasn't been any real movement on that front, which is quite disappointing because for some of us, you know, the, the, big, the big issue is that at any point in time, if, for instance, one side, as a majority side, is able to mobilize, I mean, all its uh, numbers, uh, they just need a simple majority to pass a number of things that come before the House, uh, including, for example, today we heard on our Adongo mm -hmm. chastising the Bank of Ghana, uh, which is a very, very serious matter, you know, and he says. I mean, the bank should have come to the House and through a simple majority get a resolution to allow it because it's uh, public money and so on and so forth. 
And this simple resolution, for instance, I mean, could be gotten uh, if you have just one side of the house, I mean, all fully constituted and so on and so on. So the point I'm making is that, you know, you know the continuing court is a worry because uh, it could happen that someday, uh, maybe some important matter could pass, uh, unless maybe the minority side has another strategy of making sure that this um, this does not happen. So for me, that is a big the big low. Uh, I mean, during the, this kind of uh, uh, period that that uh, that has just ended today. I mean, the clear indication is that you know the inconvenience that we have imposed on them that look go and sit and find a way to you know to work as a family i mm -hmm. mean uh, do some give and take uh, as happens in most democracies i think uh, they are still not i mean getting out of their comfort zones and entering the zone where you know they would have the mindset that we can never have have it 100 percent. we need to i mean uh, make some sacrifices i mean in the in the name of democracy in the interest of of our country mm -hmm. um i think the other the other law, uh, Alfred, is the fact that, I mean, still this uh, financial crisis that we are facing as a country, the debt mm -hmm. exchange program, the Bank of Ghana issue that I alluded to earlier, uh, the cathedral issue and all the resources that have been spent. I mean, Parliament has not had a proper handle on this financial matter. And you know, uh, over the years, this is one of the weakest link, if you like, in the in all the kind of core functions of parliament. I mean, there have been documented um, evidence over the years that mm -hmm. our parliament does well in most areas. Uh, but when you compare it to uh, kind of sister parliaments around the continent, we fall short when it comes to this matter of uh, financial oversight and, and playing the, the the role of the the, the I mean the power of right. the press that is that is um, given to parliament mm -hmm. you know so that is that is another and then I think uh, there are I mean issues around the LGBTQ uh, bill that is still hanging we don't know uh, I mean what is really right. happening and so, um, so these are some of the loops. I mean, if you look at the highs, let me just mention one or two. Um, despite uh, these challenges, I mean, when you look carefully, you realize that the if parliament, I think, has surprised most of us because it's done certain things that most of the parliaments before it have not been able to do. So let me take the standing orders. I mean, the new standing orders. I hope they see the light of day. Uh, but I mean, what the standing orders are trying to do is um, try to reset the power dynamics. I mean, change the power relationship, if you like, in Parliament going forward. I mean, so that you know the power is 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 divided. Power is shared, if you like, and then Parliament's work is put out there. You know, so that all of us can follow and see beyond the work of the PAC and the the, the appointments committee. The other committees are now going to be uh, holding their kind of um, meetings in public. And then two days ago, Alfred, mm -hmm. uh, the Speaker Parliament also launched what is called the Citizens Bureau. And I had the, the honor of I mean, speaking on behalf of all civil society organizations in our country. Right. You know, what the Citizens Bureau is trying to do also is try and I mean, also reset the relationship between parliament and citizens, where we we'll have a one-stop shop, where at least uh, uh, most organizations who have something to offer, some contributions to make parliament, at least uh, have an avenue through to which so. this can be done. And this okay. has not been possible, uh, I mean, for many, many parliaments before. I see. Now, it's a very comprehensive wrap of your own analysis of this particular session. And Kamala, I'll round up with you on this as one well because you, you've been covering this session as well. And you've witnessed all the boycotts and, and, and everything that played out. In summary, what are the, the major highs and lows during this session that's just ended? 
So Dr. Draman is spoken about the laws. I think it has to do with the boycott to a very large extent. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, we have seen some, some uh, for want of a better word, some commitment from the minority side in as much as they, they say they are boycotting. Mm -hmm. But yet still, we have, we have seen them, one, attend to the committee meetings and also in times that they, they do not have to attend to court uh, uh, to the courts, they come to the chamber and you see, but clearly, I must, I must say that there's a lot of work that needs to come from the majority side because we have seen it over the period that it does appear that when, when the minority is not there, sometimes, I mean, it is, it is very, very hard to get the numbers from the majority side. You can understand that there's ministers of state, you know, uh, are empty, so they have to attend to businesses and the ministries. And also, I mean, the issue about they struggling for their seats now, they've not had the primaries, the, the, the primaries for both parliament and also as the flag bearer of their party. All of this is also right. going on, and so there's all of them. But let me just quickly uh, run through what they've been able to do in terms of the highs. Now, we have seen a partial repeal of the death okay. um, penalty, the, making the witchcraft accusations illegal. We have seen the anti-gay bill progress to the consideration stage. Strange, Dr. Yes. Dorman I spoke about that. We've also had the 30 years of parliamentary democracy. That in this of also uh, had the establishment of the Citizens Bureau that he spoke about. Then the adoption of the Standing Orders Committee. Concerns have been mentioned on this offer, and I must tell you, some MPs are, are not entirely in favor of what the current Standing Orders is, especially depending on which side of the divide you stand. Right. If you're in the minority, I mean, um, for instance, appointment committee, they want to take it from the majority and, and then give the chairmanship to the minority. The fear of some is that, okay, if things change, then some can use it. But, I mean, as Lalisi, they're still in, in, in the concentration stage. Stage for that. They did not actually finalize it yet. But then, we've right. also had the presentation of the CPA budget review. And also following up today, the issue of the National Cathedral. And also, uh, Dr. Draman spoke about uh, and how Parliament has not been able to come or stamp its feet on the issue of the debt testing and the financial uh, uh, the challenges the country faces. It's one of the things that the minority has trumped and for instance, the ranking member. Uh, uh, That's Isaac Adongo, who has been talking about this quite consistently, yeah, indeed. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see, this particular issue is one that will still linger on um, into the next session. And this is something that I know you're going to be following quite closely as well. And um, really appreciate your time, as always. Kumla uh, Kluchin, great stuff, great work done. And to you, uh, Dr. Rashid Draman, thank you so much. And, and thank you as well for the message of congratulations to the team. We appreciate your, your, your support over the period. Thank you very much. Coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the New Patriotic Party's upcoming Special Delegates Conference. Some, some flag bearer aspirants say they doubt that President Ekufuado does not support any candidate. Now, I want to take a listen to the president. Now, when he said this, exactly what he said, that really no president can foist a candidate on the NPP. Take a look. The assertions, and it was made by your director, that by some in the party that uh, government is somehow allegedly, quote, intimidating or, quote, coercing party faithful to throw their support behind one of the presidential aspirants. And we have to be open about it. The allegation is being made that the government is putting all its authority behind the vice president. I want to say in very clear terms to you and to the world, it is a false and malicious narrative. There's not a single truth to it. That's why I can beat my chest and I can say without any fear of contradiction, there's no one in the party, there is not a single person in the NPP who can say that I have asked him or her
to support this or that aspirant? Well, even, even this statement by the president, as he's saying emphatically, it's not convincing enough for some of the flag bearer hopefuls. The likes of Kwame Japan says that, you know what, action speaks louder than words. Let's hear from him. Action speaks louder than words. The optics have created a different impression. What's the impression? The opt I mean, when you have a lot of president's appointees, not ministers. Ministers are political, so they can do what they want to do. You know, but public officers like the managing director of Bui Dam or like the managing director of State Transport Corporation or the director general of Ghana Lotteries, any of the public institutions, State Housing Corporation, the managing director, I mean, these are public officers who should respect the rules of corporate governance. You know, you, you are put in place, you work for Ghana. It's a political appointment, we accept that. You can support people quietly, but outwardly, Leaving your job and joining the campaign trail, I think it's unacceptable. It's, it goes for me against governance um, procedures, and I think... So that's Governor J.J. Pond there. Dr. Sasante is a political scientist at the University of Ghana Legon is joining us. Thank you so much for joining us on Ghana tonight. How does this statement by Governor J.J. Pond strike you, that action speaks louder than words, beyond what the president has said, that, look, I am not supporting any candidate? Um, thank you, Alfred. The issue is that, yes, the president has made a statement uh, that um, under normal circumstances should calm the nerve of people. But you see the feedback that is now thrown into the system, that you can look at it critically and you can infer that people do not necessarily trust uh, that statement from the president, that they believe that he needs to go beyond this and do more. Why are they saying that? Because, one, you have, if uh, if you listen to Mr. Kabrani Japan, he's talking about the fact that there are public officials, CEOs, who, by the nature of their work, they are not supposed to be engaged in partisan politics. They are following uh, the, the, uh, the vice president. All right? And those things are not uh, good. Uh, from his perspective and from governance perspective. So uh, why are these things uh, happening? And that if the president indeed is interested in stopping this thing, then you should rein them in and then ask them to what? Stay off. Then that one, people will find, uh, you know, find it what heartwarming and then they will believe in what the president is saying. You see? Uh, these things are important because in election, any action or any decision that is taken that has the potential of undermining the equal playing field creates a credibility problem. And at the end of the day, uh, it can disturb uh, the free nature of the election. So I think that it is important that uh, Mr. President can look at a statement and then add more by telling those who are following, uh, you know, the vice president, who are uh, CEOs and whatnot, uh, to desist from that. Uh, I think that will go a long way to help. Mm. It is also uh, in the interest of, of the party itself uh, to also advise people to, to uh, remain, uh, you know, faithful to the rules of the game. Why am I saying this? Because if you look at it, um, if this thing trend continues and people still have uh, the belief that one, the what they call the establishment candidate, continue uh, to have his way, uh, it can create problems uh, for the candidate himself in the sense that you, you are going to incur the wrath of uh, some uh, electorate who will say that. Uh, they are not going to give you their vote because there is an equal playing field and that they believe that uh, other than you, others should have uh, one person should have their vote and then you know the consequence. The other thing is that it also uh, denying the, the electorate the opportunity to assess the people on their own merit. Because if you allow 
uh, if the president is able to what, um, rein the people in and then they stop following uh, one particular candidate and all that, at the end of the day, uh, people are going to, the electorate are going to judge them based on their own uh, merits or their own strength and out right. of which they will decide who is fit for the party. Uh, the ability to do this thing uh, professionally right. uh, will go a long way to select a candidate that is suitable to all and that will uh, find favor with Absolutely. the people of this country if the people indeed are interested in what retaining them in office. We'll see how uh, things play it's out. Also, indeed, and that's why um, this particular concern that they they have raised, the party would also have the responsibility to respond. Thank you, Dr. Sasante Sapolokol, scientist at the University of Ghana, political science department. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Tomorrow is a holiday, but we will have a program. So join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Akansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.